Trousers of Twilight. Legends say that these trousers were once worn by a hero who battled the Beast of Twilight. Insides are lined with cozy wool fur. Does that insinuate that Link plucked fur from his body in order to line his trousers? What on earth is this? What on earth is this? This is creepy. That one has eyes. Uh, just, just to recap, this is where I am on the map. Uh, I've been doing a bit of, uh, let's just call it errata recently to re-explore areas that I've been before and find Korok seeds in them. And I never took a left here or a right, depending on which way I'm going. And I've never been back here. But that statue has eyes. I'm really freaked out by this. Uh. Uh. Hello? 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 I don't know what to think of you. You're very frightening. Hello. I don't remember you. When a dark light resides in the cursed statue's eyes, pierce its gaze to purge the seal from the shrine. I'm not wrong, am I? It must be around there. What are you up to? Ha! Huh, let me guess. You caught wind of the great Dr. Callop's groundbreaking research and just had to meet him for yourself. Heh. <laughs> no? Don't tell me you've never even heard of me, after I've dedicated my life to researching the ancient shrines. <sighs> well, you better not re you better remember my name, for it's not the last you'll hear of it. Aww. And while I'm at it, it's Dr. Callip, if you please. I don't study my rear end off to be called Mr. Callip. Everyone forgets I'm a doctor for some reason. Mm -hmm. And since you asked, I'll inform you that I'm engaged in analyzing ancient texts. I haven't the time for idle chit-chat. Ancient texts. Ah. Soon my long years of research will be revealed. And all the world will haze it, hail it to the discovery of the century. To prevent any undue attention, I haven't even told my family about my work. You understand, I'm sure. Of course, Dr. Callot. Doctor. Uh -huh. Did I just hear you call me Doctor? As in, not merely Callop, but Dr. Callop? It rolled off your tongue so naturally, it was downright sal salivary. Hmm, this changes things. Whoa. Very well then, I'm feeling charitable, so I'll let a few things spill. This is just between us, understand. When a dark light resides in the cursed statue's eyes, pierce its gaze to purge the seal from the shrine. Mm. I'm still in the process of deciphering that one, so I don't suppose there is any harm in sharing it with you. That's my life in a nutshell. Days filled with researching shrines and nights spent studying ancient texts. That leaves no time to converse with fellow- with passing strangers, so farewell. I- actually remember this uh was it in his book let, let, let's see Warren looking book here read it dark yeah I remember oh my word oh my word I remember this from like episode 8 or something like that when we dropped by uh oh, what is this called oh and of course it's a blood moon so I have to uh you know what when we dropped by for Hateno I remember reading that text and I remember this oh my word that's, that's amazing, but also it is a, a blood moon, I believe. Yeah, this is a blood moon, which means we have to warp over here. Oh, is it here? Oh, gracious sakes, I don't remember. Washa's Bluff near Satori Mountain, there is a shrine that opens whenever there's a blood moon. So I guess I should head over there and start the episode proper and then backtrack to Nekluda? where we'll find a shrine that we could have found f at the very beginning. Beautiful Moglatron, Moglatron, I can't pronounce that shrine. Do we have a blood moon to get to? Wait, is my thing wiggling? It is. Agre. I'll get that eventually. 
But let's go to our adventure log real quick. Under a red moon. When the moon bleeds and fiends are reborn, the monks will give you it will invite you as they have sworn. You must stand on the pedestal bare with nothing between you and the night air. So we're supposed to get on top of the the pedestal naked, and then the monks will give us a a thing. Okay, so we're heading this way. Uh, I would like to down a speed potion because I'm not sure how slim the window is. I've read in the comments section that it's actually not that bad. I have a lot of time to do this, but uh, I don't know. I don't. I don't quite buy it. I'm better safe than sorry. So let's run over there. We're supposed to fly straight over there and bare naked ourselves. The blood moon rises once again. Now, I'm not sure if a movement speed food gives us movement speed while flying. I hope so. But if I recall, in fact, it's orange right now, so we need to get it to get there. Uh, in the comment section, you guys assured me that I don't need to be here at exactly 12 a.m. midnight to unlock the shrine. I just have to be here on the night of a blood moon, which which takes a lot of pressure off of me. But still, it's I'm kind of worried. Let's run onto this, bearing nothing. Actually, let's equip. Let's c complete the illusion by having truly nothing in our inventory. It's as though we just started the game, although we've, we have a few more hearts than that. We're on the pedestal, and we unlocked a shrine. Man, <laughs> both of these were not how I expected to start the episode. Uh, I, I expected to spend about an hour uh, perusing Koroks and just scouting out Korok seeds, but uh, two shrines took me by surprise. Anyway, I suppose I should introduce the episode. Hey guys and gals, I'm Pal, and welcome back to The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. Last time, we uh, continued exploring the, what is this region called? The Hyrule Ridge region, I guess? And we uncovered a bunch of different cool shrines. Uh, was it last episode that we got the Forgotten Temple? I don't think it was. No, I, I don't think it was, but we did a lot of stuff. Forgotten Temple was one of them last episode, or the episode before last. And this episode is a bit unorthodox with with how I started it. I meant to start it off by going into uh, Ludfo's Bog and the Breach of Demise, because we know there's a shrine in there, and the bog has a permanent storm cloud above it, so there has to be something there as well. But, like I said, these shrines really took us by surprise, so we're <laughs> we're just going to roll with the punch and... and let the game direct us instead of the comments and my own desire. Okay, modest test of strength. I kind of expected this for some reason. Uh, for some reason, with it directing me to to strip down, I I felt like this would follow. Okay, uh, I would like to try something out because while I've been a I've asked and I haven't received an answer about what ancient proficiency does, I decided to look it up. And what I found is that if you're wielding an ancient weapon, it multiplies all of your, uh, all of its power by 1.8. So, if you take this Ancient Battle Axe plus plus, multiply it times 1.8, that's like what? 112? 108? That's pretty good. A 108 weapon is better than our Savage Lionel Crusher. It's almost as good as our Master Sword, which redoubles itself whenever it comes in handy, basically. And that's amazing. So... Apparently, this is a build. Building ancient weapons and wielding this armor set gives a lot of a lot of stats. Also, I need to use the spring-loaded hammer, so it, it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. Uh, so let's let's fight this guy with our stuff. Oopsie. Come on. What you got? That did not work. Come on. Do it again. That's better. And spin to win. Shred through his health. Look at that. Look at that. Okay. And... That did not work. Ugh. You can tell it's been a while since I've played Breath of the Wild. What are you doing? Oh, you're doing this? Oh, wait. No, wait, no. You're doing this. Ugh. Oh. Good thing I had that movement speed. And... Skrabloosh. That did a lot of damage. This build is pretty good. Die. And... He's done. 
So now, Guardian Weapons have... I, I'm incentivized to take them with this build. Uh, also, that is what we, uh, Bone Proficiency does. There are two, two sets that give us that. Uh, the Phantom Ganon armor gives us Bone Attack up. Uh, apparently, that does the same thing. And where is it? And the Radiant set also gives us Bone Attack up. So whenever we take Bone Weapons, like a Dragon Bone Weapon, uh, we get we get 1.8 multipliers on it, which is really good. That, that's really good. Okay, let's take the... I don't think it works for the shields, but yeah, at the very least, it it gives us a, a gigantic multiplier on top of our weapons, which is, like I said, it, it can't be stated enough. That's a really good end game stat. Frostblade! Uh, I know I've done this like 30 times, but do we need a Frostblade for the, the, the weapon connoisseur? Frost Spear, of course, of course. We've gotten two Frost Blades. Each time I've forgotten what we actually need, but we need a Frost Spear. Back to the Cursed Statue. We need to pierce its gaze to purge the seal from the shrine, which would require, unfortunately, us to sleep again. Oh, here, actually, before we do, here's a, here's a guy, a Dr. Callip. Yeah. Hey. When dark light resides in the cursed statue's eyes, pierce its gaze to purge the seal from the shrine. Aww. I've been wondering, I've been pondering the dark light mentioned here for some time. I must admit I'm stumped. Light can't be dark, obviously. Whoops, can't go divulging my research before I publish, now can I? Who are you publishing to? That, that's a good question, considering Aww. that Mr. Doctor, who's obsessed with Birdman, is worried about being sued or charges pressed against him for a uh, wrongful, like, scientific method? There's apparently, like, a guild somewhere of scientists, despite the world being kind of in ruins. So there's the statue again, and also a Korok seed, which I desperately need to find before I leave here. Pierce its gaze to reveal the shrine. Do I just have to shoot it? Uh, apparently so. It's gonna explode. That actually wasn't that big of an explosion. Okay. I got Wind Waker flashbacks here. Well, that's simple. And I wonder, I always wonder, can I unlock shrine quests? I suppose I can unlock shrine quests without the the actual quest, because I've done it before with the 8th heroine. So I could have gone to Dr. Callop and been, and said, you know, I've, I've done this, I solved it. You should just go in there in the morning and you'll find out. Huh. Well, that's cool. I suppose I should find this stupid Korok before I go in the shrine. Trial of Passage, Kam Arag Shrine. Whoa. We have a clock face. A clock face and a, a spiky ball. You know, I really, I always like this when shrine quests don't just reveal a blessing. I, I would say the blessing shrines are my least favorite because you don't feel entirely like you had to work for it. I mean, some of them are a chore to get through, I'll admit, but for as, ma as many shrines that are... For every shrine that's like that, I cannot climb this. For every shrine that's like that, there's another one where it just feels completely free. Okay, so there's... This thing, I suppose... Here, I want to get up to the top here. So I need to get up here... Fly, that doesn't work, okay. Uh, there's stairs, woo, this is so weird. Uh, let's take one of these with us. And ride this platform. I don't know why we need the spiky balls, if they're just obstacles for us to circumvent. But I feel like we need them just because they're not that much of a chore. Oh boy, I'm gonna run into it! Okay, I have a spiky ball. Spiky ball is mine. Now, what am I doing with Spiky Ball? Oh, I'm gonna jump up here. And... Grab it. Nice. Okay. I have Spiky Ball. What do I do with Spiky Ball? Uh, no, setting up there seems like a very bad idea. Bring it back down. The camera's being really weird. Can I... S if I set it here, it's gonna fall. Uh, it's really hard to maneuver. Set it down. Oh, wait, oh, wait, I can set it over there, okay. So set it there, that's kind of our, like our waypoint. No, don't fall! And it fell, okay. Well, let's get over here, because 
my, my sense of up and down and left and right is very is very compromised with with that gear. Okay, so we there's a chest there which we need to get, and then a stationary platform over there. So let's ride this back up. Except this time, let's grab the big one. Or not. Okay, back up to the top. I want to get this chest, and then we'll go over there, because going over there will allow us to ride the gear to the top. And then... We can get in or something? I, I'm guessing we need the spiky balls to block those laser beams. Okay, let's... Oh, this is upside down. Oh, boy. There's stairs on the underside. Okay. Grab this. A royal halberd with attack of 15. I don't have inventory space, but should I, is the question. Uh, no. I mean, I need to use the spring-loaded hammer at some point just to get it out of my inventory, because it's it's mainly a joke weapon. Okay, this, this has stairs on it, which leads me to believe that they lead to something if I ride this thing to the top. Okay, what is this leading me to? Need to be careful, because stairs are a little bit differently shaped than a normal platform. Oof. Okay, here are our stairs. I think we kind of cheated. I'm pretty sure we cheated. Uh, we're supposed to go up there and then ride the gear to the top. Although, there's, there's something over there. Wait a minute. Oh, wait, there's nothing? Okay, for some reason, they decided to put nothing here. So we have to wait for the stairs to come back around and then climb up again. Awesome. But we're, at least we're making progress, and I don't know what these lasers are for. I mean, we can stasis. Oh, we could probably stasis the, the gears, too, if if that was really important to me. Okay, we're up here. Are we done? Okay, we're done. I, it looks almost like they were just trying to show off that they could make this and not really care about the puzzle aspect to it. Which leads me to question what those balls are for. Are they just there again to, to show the concept? I don't know. A lot of these shrines feel like they're just there to to showcase a concept, like a, a theme. Like, okay, this this dungeon's theme could be clock faces, but they never actually expand on it. And so there are all these really cool ideas, but they're they're not solidified into this cool theme. Also, it's it's interesting because this shrine is much much bigger than it should be. Like. This, this room is gigantic, but there's no reason for it to be. Huh. Okay, well, let's clear the shrine and then talk to Dr. Callip. There's Dr. Callip. Hey! What a mystery. A shrine here? But I hadn't completed my inquiry into the mystery of the ancient texts. Hmm. This must be what we in the archaeology profession refer to as a stroke of luck. Or, not that I believe in any such thing. And that's that. The, the shrine that we we kind of half discovered back around episode 8 when we first found the Dueling Peak stable. We, di we ditched Licorice around here. We w weren't able to take him to the stable because there's a river in our way. And then we got Heart. And then we passed by this, this place. And because Dr. Callop wasn't there, I can only assume that we... We must have gone to that cabin during the daytime, when he was here. And then we just followed this road, and completely missed the left-hand turn. Now, that's not saying that we would have been able to solve the puzzle at the time, because I was still a bit inexperienced with how Breath of the Wild puzzles work, but we could have discovered this quest much earlier, but it's only due to my memory that we did it now. Well, cool. Okay, uh, well, let's see, what, what else do we have to do this episode? I could head to the swamp, to the Ludfo's Bog, or the Breach of Demise. There's also a shrine quest here. Uh, I know this because Cass is there fiddling up a storm. I mean, I assume it's a shrine quest. So we could go to the Breach of Demise. I know that I'm going to continue doing what I was doing, and that is uh, running down this road, finding Korok Seeds, and then... I think we'll probably end off the episode by going to the Breach of Demise, just because we've already done two Shrine Quests this episode. After finding a ludicrous amount of Korok Seeds off-screen, I... 
I'm not sure how long the end slate's going to be, but it's going to be pretty long because... I believe we started this episode off with zero Korok seeds, or close to it, and now I have 21. So, that's a lot of Korok seeds! That's an awful lot. Okay, so where are we going? Well, with the time remaining in this episode, I think it's safe to say that we probably shouldn't be undertaking any, uh, any shrine quests or lengthy shrines, and that appears to be something lengthy, because there's a storm cloud over that, always. And so it, it's probably some weird puzzle or or like the, the Dark Island. So, and if we went to go see Cass by that one bridge that he's always playing at, if he has a shrine quest for us, that also will take a while. So I'd rather drop by the shrine that I know is right out in the open. And it's in the Breach of Demise. So we're going to kind of start... I know I've been up and down here before. I would kind of like to start down near the beginning. Just so I'm not flying up to it, I'm riding up to it. I think that would be a bit cooler. Also, while I'm at it, uh, let's change my gear over to the Korok Mask, because that is almost a necessity by this point, and the Climbing Boots. Okay, let's get on to aggro, spin around, and head towards this shrine. It's right out in the open. There aren't too many of those left, but... I, I am appreciative that this one doesn't come with a uh, gigantic, time-consuming shrine quest. We discovered this one a long time ago, actually. So so long ago that I didn't even mark it with, like, a shrine indicator. I marked it with this bow, which is really weird. And I don't know why I did it like that, but I, I did. The Zalta Wash Shrine. Two orbs to guide you, Zalta Wash Shrine. There's one, and if I recall, those cannot be magnesist. Do we just shoot it? Here, what, what does this do? Whoa! Okay. Uh, let's... Okay, so we can get up there. Hmm. Let's... Let's first shoot that into the... the basin. See what it does. I'm guessing it's going to open... Yeah, it's going to open that, and we get another orb. Two orbs to guide you. And this orb probably is going to be set down on this switch. I need to... Oh. Oh, that's what we're doing now. Okay, so this requires stasis. Or actually... Wait a minute. This is a stupid idea. This is a really stupid idea. What happens... I just see an abuse case here of us who stasis the button walk in and we're trapped. Okay, they thought of that. Now if we leave, will it shut? Yes, it will. <laughs> okay, I'm glad. I'm glad that didn't happen. Okay, so let's let's do this the fun way. Instead of just knocking this thing in stasis, let's let's just drop it in. There. And that opens Oh! Stars above. I was wondering how we were going to get in there because it didn't seem like we had enough height to just jump in. But this way, it, it kind of gives us a hug. A really cool hug. Alright, I'm I'm okay with this. We haven't... Ugh, we haven't seen the chest yet. And we know all of these have chests. So... Where is it? Oh, there it is. Wait. No, that's not a platform. There's our chest. Now, is it just this one, or is there another one here? Because I feel like... Maybe I'm crazy, but... All shrines have two chests. Okay, there isn't a matching one. Right? Yeah, there's no matching one. It's not behind there. That seems kind of stupid. For them just like, oh, it's in this cranny and stuff. Hmm. You know where it might be, and this might be a waste of time behind here, no? Okay, so it's just one chest. Huh. And that's a very strange abyss that doesn't have anything in it. No, nothing. Oh, okay. Well, that's cool. We solved it. Unless... Oh. 
Well, we have a few minutes remaining in the episode, and with that time, I want to scout out the Breach of Demise. Not only because just beelining it for a shrine is an incredibly boring way of, of finding a new area, but also because for some reason, I don't know where I have this in my head, I seem to recall there being a Lynel here. I don't know why, so don't... Don't expect me to be able to answer that, but I don't, I just, there's, I, I get the feeling that there's a Lynel here. Like a, a silver Lynel. And again, I have no clue why. So we're going to scout this out, even if it means I have to kill some people along the way. Uh, the good thing is, we do have, we are obscenely powerful, so like, I can kill these guys. And I can tank their, their blows, you die. Hello. Goodbye. You. I'm gonna kite these guys at my range. Play by my strengths, and dead. Okay, where's the other guy? Oh, oh, hello, what, how did I miss them? Oh, okay, uh, do I have another spear? It's because spears are kinda nice, no I don't. Um, let's do this. Let's, let's use, uh, this, this thing. Just because I'm in the sun doesn't mean that it won't work. Okay, you, and then we'll use our new build. And three times damage, times 1.8, is math. And I accidentally messed, mashed the down on the D-pad key. What's in here? Nothing? Is there no chest for me? No purpley chest? No eye chest? Really? Huh. That's strange. I was totally expecting to get some sort of loot from that. Well, this... None of these things are a Lynel, so... That's... Sad, but maybe there's something at the other end of the breach of of demise. You have to wonder where this area got its name as well, because it is the breach of demise. Like we know who demise is, so you have to wonder: is is this what happened? What he created when he crashed down to Earth? What what actually happened? We don't we don't know. There's probably a Korok over there, but I'll grab that off screen. Uh, is is my mysterious get over aggro stop? Is my mysterious friend Lionel that I'm imagining over here? My imaginary friend? No, I don't know why I thought there was a Lionel here. I, I guess this area also just kind of feels like it should have one, but I'm imagining things. I I don't know. I remember there being Lionel, and I remember warping out at the last minute. I don't know. Maybe I've seen someone else do that. Maybe I walked by uh, one of my friends while they were playing Breath of the Wild and that happened. But I remember it plain as day and I remember complaining about how broken and warping out seems to be or feels at times when it, it turns every life-threatening situation into an easy escape route and I was, I was talking about that. But maybe I'm wrong. Maybe that or maybe that's master mode. I haven't been playing much of master mode. Certainly not enough to get this far but I Okay, I guess I guess I was wrong, huh? Well, I guess I was wrong. I ate my words, and now I'll end the episode as I go get, get this. I assume there's a Korok seed over here. All right, thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed this episode in any capacity, please click like. If you didn't, then drop a comment telling me I can make the next episode so that you would like it. I release new episodes of The Legend of Zelda: Breath of the Wild every Monday and Wednesday. And join me next time where we finally get over to Ludfo's Bog. My goodness, I've I have uh, I have procrastinated that. That was what we were supposed to be getting to this episode, but things took an unforeseen turn. But next episode, I'm going there. I'm absolutely going there. Probably.
I did it! <laughs> yes! That was cool! Now I'm curious, are there any other shots that are it's possible to make with this? Is this is this super open-ended, or could I have done it a host of different ways to achieve the same result? So I'm, I'm gonna see. In fact, I'm gonna see on screen here because I'm I'm really curious. This was a cool shrine with a very unorthodox solution.